Hello to all my friends gathered at the Border to Border Broadband Conference in St. Paul. I know you have a call to action and that's the right thing to do and I would love to be there with you in person. But as you know, there's just a few things going on right now, so I'm honored to join you via video. I'd first like to thank the Blandin Foundation for hosting the conference and especially Bernadine Johnslin, who I invited to testify before the Senate Commerce Committee on the importance of broadband adoption. It's not just the technicalities, as you know, of getting it out there. It's also making sure that people adopt broadband. And, and uh, Bernadine just did a wonderful job. She's a true advocate for broadband. Thanks also to all of you for the work you're doing to connect Minnesota, particularly our rural communities. I'm especially excited about the launch of the state's new Office of Broadband Development and the naming of Dana McKenzie as executive director. Expanding broadband is a great equalizing force for boosting rural economies and leveling the playing field, and I'm glad that Governor Dayton is giving this issue the attention it deserves. Today, you don't need to live off a major highway or in a bustling city center to find a good job, start a business, or get a quality education. I know. I visit all 87 counties in Minnesota every year, and I see the incredible work going on, jobs being created, businesses being started. But I also know this. You need a high-speed internet connection to do it, and to do it in any kind of a major way. In the 1930s, we worked to bring electricity and telephone service to every home in America. Today, we are doing the same thing to expand broadband. It's the infrastructure challenge of our generation. Bringing broadband to rural communities has been a priority for me, as you know, since my first days in the Senate. I continue to press the Federal Communications Commission and the Rural Utility Service to support broadband deployment, an issue I discussed with the new chairman of the FCC, Tom Wheeler, during his nomination process. In fact, on his first day in office, he received a letter from me asking him to re-examine some changes to the Universal Service Fund to ensure that this program has a positive impact on rural America and broadband deployment. I'm pleased to say that he is committed to reviewing the Universal Service Fund policies for rural service providers. In 2012, the administration used an executive order to implement a bill that I introduced to make it easier to build broadband infrastructure, which you know is the second part of the problem. The policy requires states and agencies to coordinate highway construction with conduit installation. In other words, to only dig once. Many areas across Minnesota have seen the benefit already of new and improved high-speed broadband service. I'm sure Blandin will be telling you about them. But these connections are about economic development, healthcare services, and our schools. I have heard so many businesses, uh, whether it's Agco uh, down in Jackson, uh, whether it's Toro uh, in, near Wyndham, or whether it is uh, the lodges up in northern Minnesota saying we can't compete and add more jobs here if we don't have the kind of high-speed internet that we need. And that's why, particularly in those areas, you'll hear some of the success stories. And if you don't, ask Blandin about it. But in terms of expanding and using some of this federal money to expand service, Northern Minnesota has been taking a while, uh, but it's finally started up and it's going to make a big difference and allow our lodges and resorts to truly compete against Canada. Uh, this is also about improving the lives of residents by giving everyone an equal footing to launch a new business, export their goods, or Skype with loved ones. Unfortunately, as you know, there are still pockets across the state that need access to these benefits that accompany high-speed broadband. We need to encourage continued investment. That's why it's so important you're having the conference today. In the Senate, I'm not just focused on the importance of broadband deployment, but also the issue that Bernadine discussed at the hearing, the issue of broadband adoption. We need to make sure that all citizens are accessing high-speed internet. We know that the return on investment for broadband connection is high. We also know that community-led approaches and targeted public policy goals can help drive broadband deployment and adoption. Once people have access to broadband, we need to make sure they had, can sign up for the service and benefit from having broadband in their homes or businesses. We need to invest in our nation's future, and that means investing in high-speed broadband access, digital literacy, and programs to help close the digital divide. While we've come a long way in the last few years, we still have work to do in bringing broadband to homes and businesses across the state. I'll continue to be a strong voice in the Senate on these issues. 
I know that broadband isn't just good for local economies. It's good for our nation's economy and our ability to compete globally in business, exports, and education. Broadband and quality communication make that possible. You make that possible. So thank you for all your hard work. Enjoy the conference, and I'm looking forward to getting a report back. Thanks.